morning friends. On behalf of UncommonThread.com, I'd like to thank you for downloading our video, the Saki Original Metallic Thread. My name is Michelle Umloff and I am a certified Saki teacher. In this video, I'm going to show you how it is possible to sew successfully using the original metallic thread. I'm also going to give you instructions on how to create this really cute cushion using grow grain ribbon, your built-in decorative stitches, and the original Saki metallic thread. All of this information will be available to you at uncommonthread.com. Look under the how-to section and you can download a copy of this presentation. Saki Original Metallic Thread is a very fine metallic foil that is wrapped around a strong core. The end result is a soft, smooth thread. The Original Metallic Thread comes in at a 30 weight, so it's right in the middle, but one thing to keep in mind, the industry standard for built-in decorative stitches as well as most of the digitized embroidery designs, they were created with with 40 weight rayon thread in mind. So you have to make some adjustments when working with either lighter or heavier weight thread and heavier weight thread in our case. You will definitely need to lower the top tension of your setting, your machine setting substantially. You'll want to use a lightweight bobbin thread and you want to use a soft pliable stabilizer. Avoid small stitches because this is a metal thread. It's a metallic. It doesn't really like to bend that much and it doesn't like to make those small stitches. You definitely need to sew slower. Consider using a thread lubricant, but I caution you to check your manual carefully or if you have any questions about that, consult your dealer. Some people don't recommend using the thread lubricant in some of these newer machines. If that's the case, you can still use the thread lubricant at the eye of your needle. You definitely want to use the right needle for the job, and there are several different types of needles that fit the bill for working with this type of thread. Perhaps you might have to thread your machine unconventionally, and what I mean by that is you probably would have to bypass a thread guide or two or do something a little different in order to make your sewing experience more fun and less frustrating for you. Like I said, you want to use the right needle for the job, and the needle that we're going to use is a 1490. But you don't want to use a universal type needle. You want to use one of those specialty needles like a metallic needle, stop, top stitch needle, embroidery, or even a denim needle. And if you're using a 1490 metallic needle and you're having some problems, switch to the top stitch needle. If that gives you problems, switch to the embroidery needle and so forth. It is possible that you just might have to increase the size of your needle and that also depends on what it is you're stitching on. The metallic thread is safe to dry clean. You can wash it in cool to warm water, but you want to avoid any type of bleach or optical brighteners. Dry in the dryer on a low setting, and when using your iron, you want to use a low setting. I even recommend that you use a press cloth over your stitches just to protect them. When you have some time, sit down at your sewing machine and can create yourself a thread sampler by just stitching out the various decorative stitches in your machine. And what I like to do is write on the back the thread that I used, the thread that I used in the bobbin, and you have several alternatives, I'll mention them in a moment, the stitch length and width that you had, the tension setting that you used, the type of needle, fabric stabilizer, and so forth. The Saki Original Metallic Thread is available in all these beautiful colors. There are 36 different colors and like I mentioned it's a 30 weight thread and it's available in the snap size spool and then there's a um, the snap size spool also contains more yardage um, at a thousand yards. If you want the entire collection you would want to look into the metallic dream collection and not only does it contain all of the original metallic threads but it also has all of the sliver and the hollow shimmer threads. You can use the original metallic thread in your serger, your sewing machine, your embroidery machine, a knitting machine, handwork. You can do applique, quilting, top stitching, 
fashion sewing and crafting. This is just a really, really fun thread to work with, but you have to implement some different methods to be successful in using this thread. Now, I mentioned earlier about your alternatives to bobbin thread. You would want to use a lightweight thread and Saki bobbin thread is the ideal thread to use for this. It's available in white or black or you could use the polyester invisible thread also available in clear or smoke. If you want the underside of your project to look just as pretty as the top side, consider using the Saki rayon thread or the poly light thread. So let me show you how to make this really cute cushion. You're going to need a few supplies. You will need two pieces of 8 inch by 16 inch Saki st Stiffy Stabilizer and you want to sew them together to create a 16 by 16 inch square. We're going to use original metallic thread, a Saki bobbin thread, one inch grosgrain ribbon, and the sheer wired ribbon for the bow. And you'll also use the 1490 top stitch needle, metallic needle, embroidery needle, whatever. Visit uncommonthread.com to purchase your supplies. You receive 15% off these products and more every single day. So visit them at www.uncommonthread.com. So we're going to set up our machine for the decorative stitch. Your, your stitch length and width may vary, but remember that the metallic thread does not like short stitches. The feed dogs will be raised and you'll want to use a decorative stitch foot or a foot that coordinates with the type of stitch that you're using. I also recommend using the quilting guide bar and you'll see a picture of that in a moment. Your tension is going to be lowered substantially since we're working with the original metallic thread and you'll also want the lightweight bobbin thread. And here is your needle. I've mentioned that a couple times so far, the 1490. We're also going to use a zigzag stitch. Nothing crazy here. The stitch length is 1.5, the stitch width is 2.3, and you're free to change that to whatever type of setting you would like. The rest of the things stay the same. So you're just going to cut strips of the grosgrain ribbon, you're going to place them on the stabilizer, and you're going to sew the decorative stitch down the center of perhaps a, a plain piece of ribbon. And you can see that I have an arrow pointing to the quilting bar guide. What that does is it guides me so that I can sew straight down the middle of that plain piece of ribbon because you can see that it's just offset from my presser foot a little much, a little bit, so I couldn't use that as a guide. The quilting bar guide will help me in that instance. And while you're looking in that area, you can see where I sewed the stabilizer pieces together. You're going to sew the decorative stitch down the plain ribbon and then when you want to join another piece of ribbon to that one just sew the zigzag stitch along the, the joint where those two pieces of ribbon meet and it will connect them. I recommend pressing as you go along just to keep everything nice and flat and on the back side of my pillow. I used the polyester clear invisible thread so that it looked like it was seamless, that there was nothing really holding those together, like it really looked like it was its own fabric. Remove the stabilizer pieces. I actually just removed them off the backs of the um, pink ribbon, the ribbon that had the little circles on them, the polka dots. Use a rotary mat cutter um, and ruler to square up your fabric and trim it down to whatever size you would like. Now we're going to do a couple more things. We have to put this together and first we're going to start out with a base stitch and I'm going to show you a technique to turn something right side out so that it's really pretty. So for a base stitch you need a stitch length of about 5.0. Stitch width is not applicable. The feed dogs are raised. We'll use an all-purpose foot normal tension because we have regular construction thread in the top and bobbin and you can use that same needle. Then we're going to use a straight stitch and our stitch length is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 3.5 to 4. So what you're going to do is 
you're going to place the right sides together and you're going to have to leave a four to six inch uh, opening if you will so that you can stick your hand in there and turn this right side out and fill it up with the fiber fill but I learned this really cool technique from Sue Hausman and what you want to do in this area that I have marked off in red four to six inches you want to base stitch along there and then once you get to the one end you're going to change the stitch length and you're going to continue sewing all around the project remember to back stitch when you go to use the regular shorter length stitches and you're going to use a half inch seam allowance so here's where the really neat part is and if you look at this picture on the left you see that I'm using I marked the base stitches and I actually based um, marked it on the stabilizer you can actually just take that part remove that part of the stabilizer because it will get in the way and make this technique a little bit more complicated so remove that part of the stabilizer so you will apply a strip of steam seam 2 it's a fusible tape it's a quarter inch wide and you're going to apply that to the back side of the ribbon in between that that's that section that's marked and then it has a release paper take the release paper off and it will be stuck to the opening there so what it's doing is it's helping you turn this right side out making that seam nice and even and there's so there's no guesswork there's no unevenness that's a really neat technique and just use a seam ripper to open up those basting stitches remember to clip your corners turn it right side out and poke your corners out so they're nice and square then stuff it with the fiber fill then place a piece of steam seam 2 inside the opening and you can see that where I have that little arrow pointing you want need another piece of steam seam right along that opening and then remove the release paper and then you're going to pin it that opening shut and then press it closed and leave it pinned for a little while like maybe a minute just to let that bond cure and then it finishes off really nice and neat and just go ahead and embellish it with some more ribbon to complete your project. I teach online classes and my website is www.sosimplified.com all of my classes are licensed Saki classes and one of the projects is on the go travel tray where I go through and show you how to use decorative thread very much like this video and it features the metallic thread the confetti scarf is another very fun project and it also uses the metallic thread visit my website to become my sewing friend and receive one of my classes for free not your grandma's bowl I also have a podcast out on iTunes it's called the so simplified podcast and find me on Facebook I'm under so simplified so remember to visit uncommonthread.com for all of your sewing supplies you receive 15% off retail prices every single day so to reach us, the website is www.uncommonthread.com or email us at uncommonthread at comporium.net. Remember to look us up on Facebook and you can do a search of uncommonthread.com and you can find us there. Thank you so much for your time and we look forward to helping you out.